I'm just giving it a second to make sure we're live. We'll give it one second here. Are we live? Jake, one second. You need to let me know if we're live. Let's make sure. Let's make sure. Mm. Oh, I got to add. I think that means we're live. I think we're live. We are live. Okay. Oh, we are live. Let's do a full intro here. Let's hide this. We'll do a real intro. My name's Angelo, and welcome to We Want Picks. This is the only channel dedicated to UFC picks, fantasy drafts, betting guides, and monkey knife fight picks run by professional fighters and MMA insiders. This week, it's just me and Jacob, or at least tonight, it's just Jacob and I. Nick Newell, his video comes out in a couple of weeks, two weeks. The trailer drops Movie. in four days. So he is like doing press stuff right you said now. Video, for, but it's like a movie. It's yeah, his movie comes out. Yeah, you said video. Oh like, well, I meant to say movie. Nick Newell's feature film. Yeah, it is a feature film. So Nick Newell's movie comes out uh, in a couple of weeks. So he's doing press stuff right now. Um, and Danny Boy is traveling for work, but he will be with us tomorrow filming the betting breakdown video. Jacob and I are going to walk through the entire UFC 264 card, all of our picks, our plays, and our bets. First up at UFC 264, we have Alan Emadovsky versus Yazong Hu. Alan Emadovsky, three and two in his last five, coming off two losses in a row. Yazong Hu, also three and two in his last five, also coming off two losses in a row. This is a weird matchup. We had one of these a couple months ago. Both of these dudes coming off crazy long layoffs. Both of them. Yazong is almost three years out of competition. Almost three full years out of competition. Alan Emadovsky, uh, what is it, a year and a half, I think, is his layoff. So I think it was. Is, what? I said, I think it was. I was just letting you know. Oh, my God. That's how this, September that's how this is going to go. Either way, this is a this is a weird fight. A very, very weird fight. Uh, Alan Emanofsky. Who's, whose layoff was USADA, right? Uh, was, yeah. So yeah, let me do the breakdown real quick. It was USADA. So uh, Alan Emanofsky, big-time favorite. I do think these odds are wide, especially when you factor in the layoffs. So uh, Yuzong Hu, very long layoff with a USADA failed drug test in the mix. Um, we have to assume he's clean for this fight. Uh, I don't know too many questions, right? I don't know how much of his mediocre success came from uh, the when substances. Was, when was this picture taken? This has got to be an older picture, right? This has got to be while he was doping. That doesn't look like a doping body type, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's when... Uh, he was a light heavyweight. He's come down to middleweight here. So he's a light heavyweight. I'm imagine some of that chub has shed off because now this is that middleweight. Uh, he works against the cage for takedowns. He can strike, but he's definitely looking to close the distance, work for the takedowns. And Alan Emanowski, Alan M. Edofsky, there's a bunch of names on this card I'm going to butcher. Uh, he was undefeated coming into the UFC. So 8-0 coming into the UFC. He lost both of his UFC fights, which is never a good sign. Uh, he's a striker who chases knockouts. So he is looking for the knockout at all times, throw in those heavy bombs. He absolutely 100% has holes in his grappling game. If he can stay on his feet, he definitely has the advantage striking, and he and he most likely has the power for a stoppage. But if he cannot stay on his feet, that's it. And I think this is just a weird matchup. There's too many questions. Allen is out for a year and a half. Yazong out for three full years. Yazong does have the grappling. He is the bigger person um, coming into this fight. I think... Yazong is my uh, my underdog pick here because I think he works his way against the cage, throw whatever he needs to throw, absorb whatever he needs to absorb, gets Allen against the cage, takes him down, and uh, there's there's a big gap there uh, with the grappling. But All right. that's sort of I know my I, I'm I'm sick, but show goes on. Um, I think I think Yazong gets it done, but th this is a three year layoff. He has a USADA. Uh, substance fail in the mix. He's coming down a weight class. Emma Dovsky, also a layoff, does have heavy power, has giant holes in the grappling. 
I got to go with the grappler. I have to assume he's in good shape. He's definitely going to be the bigger guy. So I'm going with this young. You're, you're making faces. You have your fancy new apartment. Your blue shirt makes your blue eyes pop. What are you doing? I don't need the shirt. They pop. They pop no matter what. But <laughs> so who's is it? Hugh? Is that Hugh? Is that how you say it? I am Hugh? not the authority on pronouncing names, and you know that. So Hugh, uh, I don't know how he's in the UFC. I have no idea. He is three and two. The his opponent's records for his three wins. One is zero <laughs> and two. One is 0-1, so that was his only fight and he lost, and then he stopped fighting. He the retired guy, somebody. You're looking at it all wrong. He's he got, no good. He retired somebody. The other guy is 2-3. and three. So if my math's correct, his combined wins are against people that are 2 and 5, 6, three, 2 and 6. <laughs> Jesus. So 2 and 6 is his opponent's wins, and somehow he made the jump to the UFC. And for some reason, even after you saw, he got popped for USADA, they still kept him around, even though he wasn't winning. So I don't know why he's on the roster. I think they probably forgot he was on the roster and had to <laughs> offer him a fight and said, here you go, so we can offer you a fight and then get you out of here. Uh, Allen has actually fought real competition. He has lost his last two, um, but I, th I believe he's in the Bell uh, and Bellator before the UFC. So he's, he's, he's seeing real competition. Uh, Hugh's not seen real competition. When he got to UFC, he's lost both of his fights. Um, the three-year layoff on top of it. I have Allen in my lineup. I, Allen's in my lineup at $9,000. I just don't think Hugh's that good. Maybe he, maybe he surprised us. Maybe he took that three years really focused and and, and and worked on his craft. But I have Allen in my lineup. I think he wins the fight. And I, I just would not trust Hugh at, at this point with the competition he's faced with the layoff you, and everything else. So, listen, I... I I have in my notes, don't touch this fight. Um, I think Hugh wins just because I'm a big styles make fights guy. You know, if you watch these breakdowns, you know I'm all about the styles and the matchups. We have grappler versus striker. The grappler is a bigger guy, and he's not shoot from across the cage grappler. He's or he's work you against the cage, tie you up, take you down type grappler. I think that style works here, especially when you're the bigger man. With all that being said, I can't believe you spent nine thousand dollars on a dude who has a year and a half layoff coming off of two losses like that. The guy's the ATT guy, ATT Rome. Well, Dan's not here. You don't have to pick well, American. Well, he's not at he's not at ATT like uh -huh. one. He's in he's in Rome. He's at ATT Rome. Well, either way, real quick, the monkey knife fight line. I think it's a little high on on uh, Emadovsky and a little low on Yazong. I'm going. Less more on my monkey knife. I pick. What are you doing? Uh, probably less less because Hugh is a bum. You, he's just gonna. You, you, so you think there's a stoppage here? There's I a knockout coming. Across. I mean, the guys. I mean, the guy that Allen's got one, two, three, four, five. Another math equation here. Six first round finishes. Um, if he gets it done, it's gonna happen fast, and I think he gets it done. Yeah, and I listen. That that's a hundred percent. I don't necessarily disagree with you. He's got power. He uses his power. He swings like an animal. And he's always looking for it. Three year layoff with Yazong. I don't. I don't know what we're gonna get. I wouldn't touch this at all. I'm probably. You know. I'm. I'm not gonna do any prop bets on this. Maybe the under on rounds if those odds change a little bit for me. But either way, uh, I'm going Yazong. Jacob is going with Alan Emadovsky. No bets here, but we're gonna play the monkey knife fight lines. And if you want to play those lines, go to playmkf.com/slash we want picks and triple your money. Next up at UFC 264, we have Zalgas <laughs> Zumagulov versus Jerome Rivera. Zalgas is three and two in his last five, coming off of two losses in a row. And Jerome Rivera is two and three in his last five, coming off of three losses in a row. This is, I mean, we have a big time heavy favorite here. But this is likely a loser goes home type match. I mean, if Jerome Rivera gets a fourth loss in a row, and honestly, it's basically a fifth loss in a row. Because if you rewind all the way to his last win, I thought that was a bad decision. So, reality, if I'm the judges here, he's got four losses in a row already. Zalgas with two losses in a row. You know, it's funny. This is a really good card, but the beginning of this card is loaded with like, you know, maybe not necessarily UFC level talent, but Zalgas is a UFC guy and hopefully he gets a win here and can continue uh, his career there. He's very tough, has solid power, and he's a good wrestler. He should win by closing the distance, getting it to the ground, and dominating 
with wrestling. Jerome Rivera, I mentioned it. He's lost three in a row, basically four in a row. If you go to his last win, I did not agree with that decision. He's not UFC level at this point. He just he just isn't. He's young, and honestly, he should probably get a little more experience under his belt, come back, and uh, and make a run for it then because right now he's just not ready. But he is a long, rangy striker. He uses his height and reach to stay away and doesn't work his way into the pocket. I do think Zalgas gets through that range, gets a takedown, and dominates with his wrestling. If it stays on his feet, Jerome could potentially pick him apart. Work the outside could potentially pick him apart. I just don't see that happening. Others have gotten through the range. I think Zalgas will get through the range. He is a UFC caliber fighter, and I just think this is a mismatch um, with experience and, and techniques. Zalgas is my pick. He's not a $9,300 in DraftKings pick, though, and I'm not going to bet at minus 358. Those odds are 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 pretty wide. I, I I mean, I'm I'm almost positive he wins, but that's a lot of money to put down. What are your thoughts here, Jake? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the length of, of Rivera because I believe his last fight was featherweight, and this is listed as a flyweight he's matchup. He's huge, yeah. So if he can even make this weight, he's going to be a monster. And I think there's a reason he came down because he felt that featherweight power of O'Day and said, all right, I mean, enough with this stuff. Let me come down, use my length, use my, uh, you know, my grappling ability, being the bigger guy in these fights. So it'll be interesting because if you look at Zalgas's fight against Paiva, that's another guy that kind of had length on him. And he really struggled with that length. Paiva was very in and out and he couldn't really get into a rhythm, end up losing a decision. He was basically just outpointed that fight. So you kind of mentioned it. If, if Rivera can keep that distance and kind of outpoint him, use his grappling. I, I think Rivera is almost like a submission or bust guy. He's got seven submission wins out of his 10 uh, wins. So I think he's going to try to find a way to get it to the ground. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm really worried about the length bothering Zalgas in this fight because I saw it with Paeva. He didn't really look fully comfortable. I, I think this $9,300 is wild. I think the minus 358 is wild. Um because I think that Jerome finds a way to, to win this fight. His, his losses are, you know, he has been losing, but these are just the top level of guys. You saw Ode, uh, Ode, we saw Figueredo, uh, obviously not the young, the, yeah, 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 not the Figueredo, <laughs> but, you know, Tyson Nam's another name, Brandon Vo- Royval is another name. So, you know, he's losing, but he's losing to, to top level competition. And and I think he, he finds a way to hang in this, uh, get to the ground and, and, and get a submission somehow. So I actually like Jerome in in this fight. Yeah, I mean. Lock of the week. I'm not, I'm not, I don't like it that much. But. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Zalgas is my pick, but uh, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm staying far away from it in DraftKings. I'm not, the only bet I would make here is an under on the rounds because I do think there's, there's a one turner. I think, um, you know, I think if Zalgas takes him down, gets him down, he'll just beat him up. And if Jerome keeps him at way, I mean, Zalgas is, is really tough. So there may not be a stoppage on that end. But, um, you know, I think the under on rounds, it's two and a half rounds. I think the under on rounds is probably the play here. But you have valid points about the reach. The weight class will be interesting. I mean, he's he's not exactly, you know, the last fight we broke down, there was chub everywhere, easy to cut some weight. You know, he's coming down an entire weight class, have, and he's yeah, already no skinny. Yeah, I have no idea how he's going to make that, but we'll see. Yeah, we will see. It will be interesting. I, I, anybody watching this, do not spend ninety three hundred dollars on Zalgas. Just don't. That, that's, I mean, that's a lot of money to spend. Maybe check the weigh-ins if Jerome barely makes it, looks really sucked out. That you know, then make that play. But for now, my pick Zalgas. Jacob, you're you're picking Jerome. I mean, at these odds, plus two eighty three, you might as well go to wewantpicks.com slash bets and place a bet. I mean, those are if you genuinely think he's going to win, those are some. I think awesome. he's got a good shot. I, 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 in my mind, I would see this as like a two to one. So at two eighty three, you know, that looks pretty tempting. Yeah, I mean, that's a solid bet. And if I'm doing monkey knife fight, uh, it's an interesting line because I personally think Zalgas will get takedowns and he'll be busy on top. And every this is strikes, total strikes, every little pitter patter, everything, while getting the takedown, holding against the cage, or on top, those all count. So. I'm going to go more less. I think Zalgas, eh, you know what? Let me go less, less, because if Zalgas does get him to the ground, I think he'll get him out of there. So I'll go less, less. What's your play? 
you know, I was thinking about it. I think that this could just be like a point fight. And yeah. usually in point fights, there's high striking that. So I think I would go, I don't know, that 84 is so much. so much Because he can be pretty inactive at times. He can be kind of like that counter striker. I think I would follow you. I'll, I'll go less, less. Because this could turn into a grappling match very easily. And Jerome is, is a very good submission guy. So I'd go less, less. Yeah, it could turn into a grappling match or Jerome could just stay all the way on the outside and just use his jab and his length to just stay out there and try to point something. So I'm actually really confident that less, less. If you don't know what Monkey Knife Fight is, go to playmkf.com slash we want picks. Sign up. Use promo code WWP. They will instantly match your deposit. They will give you free money. Take the free money. Do less, less on this line. All that's saying is uh, Zalgas and Jerome will land less strikes than what you see on the screen here. And if you win, you triple your money. Hit it up. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Next up at UFC 264, we have Amari Akhmedov versus Brad Tavares. And you love your Hawaiians, Jacob. So I'm well, pretty sure I, I know which. I don't like Brad because if you did your research, Angelo, he beat a former lock of the week. So. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people not to like then. So Amari Akhmedov, four and one in his last five. Brad Tavares, three and two in his last five. The reality is. Brad Tavares has fought everybody on planet Earth at that weight class. He has fought every top middleweight on the planet for the last 10 years. Period. End of story. Brad Tavares' experience cannot be compared to, to you know, Amari or, or anybody else at that level in this weight class. Amari Akhmedov is a very good grappler. He's very strong, and he has a ton of control when he wants it. Brad Tavares has good takedown defense. He's a solid striker, incredibly Very good takedown defense. Because I thought that I, the reason I picked uh, Antonio Carlos Jr. back in January, my second ever lock of the week, was because I was like, oh, he'll take Brad down and, and choke him out. That's just what he does. I don't think he got one takedown. And obviously, he's more of a jiu-jitsu guy that is yeah. not great at takedowns. So, you know, we'll see how this plays out, and I'll give my breakdown later. But his takedown defense, at least against in, Antonio, when that's all Antonio wanted to do, and he just couldn't do it. And that's why he won the fight. So. Yeah, uh, the takedown defense is the only thing that worries me. Um, that worries me here, but I do think Amari Makhmedov wins. I think he's just so relentless with his takedowns, and he is a wrestler first, so he does have legitimate wrestling skills. I think he's just relentless with his takedowns. He's incredibly physically strong. I think he gets Brad Tavares down and wins this fight, and I have him in my DraftKings lineup. So I'm that confident, $7,600. Even a couple takedowns. Takedowns are five points. So even a couple takedowns, some control time. I think Brad Tavares is going to spend most of this fight against the cage or on the mat, either trying to stand up or trying not to go down. So uh, I have Amari Makhmedov. And before I let you do your breakdown real quick, bet-wise, this is one of the first fights I did put a bet on. I bet the opposite side. I bet, um, or I'm going to bet because they didn't drop it yet. As soon as it drops, I'm going to bet Brad Tavares at plus three and a half. So all that means is I'm buying points on the judges' scorecards. If Brad Tavares wins one single round, I win the bet. So my pick is Amari Akhmedov to win this fight. I think he wins a 29-28 decision, but I think there's some solid takedowns, some solid control, and puts in some real work. I think Brad Tavares can take a round, probably the first round, when he can defend some of those takedowns, you know, and, and uh, while he's fresh, stay on his feet. Then he'll lose the next two pretty badly, and I should win that bet. So as soon as those lines drop, I'm hopping on it before they move. And if you want to place that bet, the only place you're going to find those plus three and a half bets are wewantpicks.com slash bets. Click one of the links, hop in there. That is literally the only place you're going to find those bets. And I pepper those everywhere. They're fantastic. Enough plugs. Jacob, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so conventional wisdom says that Omari – should be the lock of the week because I got to get my revenge against Brad for beating a lot for, you know, almost, I mean, technically I guess he did beat him, but you know, it's still a win in my book, but so <laughs> to get, a, to get revenge or avenge the loss from Antonio Carlos jr. Omari, if he beats Brad, that means the loss from in January is negated. And so then it turns to a win 
long story short, I, I'm picking the Omari. He's not my lock of the week, but I'm picking Omari because I, we, we mentioned the uh, the takedowns and the takedown defense against Brad. Very, very good uh, against Antonio Carlos Jr. But like you mentioned, Omari is a, is a different animal. He's coming in to wrestle. He's not coming in to just kind of grab a leg and hope he can trip you to the ground. He's going to pin against the fence. He's going to work takedowns, multiple takedowns, trips, whatever he's got to do to get you to the ground. I think that's the difference in this fight. $8,600. I'm scared to death to, to for anyone to spend $8,600 uh, on Brad, especially because he's not really a one-punch knockout guy. If you look at him, he seems like he is a guy that just takes your head off. He has five KOs and 18 wins with 11 decisions. So you know, as this fight drags on, I think it favors the grappler and Amari. So he's my pick. He didn't he didn't quite make it in my lineup. Uh, he's not lock of the week. Um, because there is, you know, a former lock of the week on this card and we have some other, uh, capable people as underdogs. So, um, I, I like Omari to win this fight. I think he's good value at $8,700. I just put my money, uh, elsewhere. So, yeah, I mean, and, and that's, uh, and, and the big question I guess would be Brad Tavares's experience. I mean, that guy has, he has fought everybody. If you go through his record, he has fought, not only has he fought everybody that's in the top 10 now, he's fought the top 10 for the last 10 years all of them at that time. So he's definitely got the experience. So this is not the first time he's fought a very good wrestler, but he is a little later in his career. He's super young actually, but you know, um, there was a study that went out a few years ago that said MMA age has nothing to do with your actual age, but fighters peak at like their 14th year of competition. And then it's an incredibly steep drop off after that. So, and they use Randy Couture and a bunch of older fighters that started later as examples. So I'm going on a rant here, but Brad Tavares has been around the block. He has some great wins. He has some, some loss against tough competition, but I think he's on the downslope and a dominant wrestler uh, like Amari Akhmedov, I think has that advantage and gets that done. Monkey knife fight very quickly. I am perfectly fine. Oh boy. I was going to say with the more and more. I do think this is a three round fight. 74 and a half has me worried, but I think more and more is the play. I think Amari, when he gets on top, is going to be busy and get those strikes in. And Brad, when he's against the cage, defending takedowns, pepper, 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 touch, touch, touch. I mean, yeah, that's, every single one counts. That's yeah, that's the biggest difference. If this was significant strikes, I'd go less, less for sure. But total strikes, like you said, those little beep, beep, beep on the side of the head as they're trying to get takedowns and stuff like that, everything counts. So I, I would probably play the more and more here as well. Yeah, uh, I completely agree. Those are live, by the way. The monkey knife fight lines are live right now as you're watching this. Open another tab. Go to playmkf.com slash picks. Sign up. Use the promo code and go ahead and play. Play these lines now. They do move just like betting odds. As money comes in, the lines move. So if you like a line, hit it now before they move it. Next up at UFC 264, we have Jennifer Maya versus Jessica I. And last time we broke down Jennifer Maya, we talked about her jujitsu skills, and you made the point just to point out she's not that Maya. Either way, Jennifer Maya is three and two in her last five. Wait, I pointed what out? You're like, oh, you see that last name Maya? You know she's a great grappler. Blah blah blah. Oh, that's what I thought I said, but I thought the way you said it was I went the opposite way. Like she's not no, an no, actual no. Maya. No, huh. I mean you don't go on the ground with a Maya. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Unless and, you're Kachenko, I guess. Jessica I two and three in her last five. Jessica I like the perennial, always right there. Like you know, think things. What a what an ugh, man. She's frustrated. Jessica I is very frustrating because I feel like she can beat everybody, and then I watch her lose to everybody, and it's like, of course she lost. And then well, she has got, a really good got win. Another lock of the week connection because her last win was against Vivi. <laughs> well, and then she has a, you know, and then she'll have a performance where she looks really good. And it's like, of course, you know, she's been around forever. She's got a ton of experience, of course. So uh, Jessica I is always tough to pick. But Jennifer Maya is basically better everywhere <laughs> if you're comparing her to Jessica I. She has very good jujitsu. She's also got good striking, underrated striking. Um and I think, you know, if she gets it to the ground, she'll absolutely dominate there. But I think she can win this if it stays on their feet as well, which is hard to say because Jessica I fancies herself as a boxer. The reality is she's not very fast and she seems to be a step behind in a lot of these exchanges. But Jessica I is ridiculously tough. She does have solid striking, but she doesn't do well when she gets bullied, right? She doesn't do well when somebody's in her face. She doesn't do well when somebody's willing to grapple with her 
and and just be relentless interface throwing things working for takedowns that's where she struggles and i do think that's what jennifer maya is going to do i think she's going to come in with her striking close the distance work it to the ground uh and win the fight there the problem is jessica i has that experience it's similar to the brad tavares breakdown we just did anytime you have the experience fighting the best on the planet for 10 years you have some tricks up your sleeve, but I do think that uh, Jennifer Maya gets this done, but I think it's a decision. Jessica I is really hard to put away. Obviously, the level of competition she's fought, she has been put away, but I do not see Jennifer Maya submitting Jessica I. I do think she wins a fight. I think she wins a decision, uh, and a prop bet on a unanimous decision will get you some plus odds when she's almost a two-to-one underdog or a two-to-one favorite. What are your thoughts there, Jakey boy? Yeah, so I mentioned it. Jessica beat uh, one of my lock of the week. She hadn't been a lock of the week when she beat her. She beat her in 2019 in Vivi, but you know I got to get, I got to go with Jennifer because if you beat a lock of the week, I got, I'm very loyal to my lock of the week. So I like Jennifer Maya. Like like I mentioned before, she is a Maya. She does. She is very good on the ground. She knows her submissions, but she's one of those shoot boxing Brazilians. And and the, everyone that comes out of that shoot boxing camp is very very precise with their hands. Very very fast. Um, and knows when to lay on the power. It's it's not all power, but when they sit on the power, it's real power. So I, I like Maya in this fight. You know, Jessica is like, she is so experienced that I would be very hesitant to put Jennifer Maya in my lineup at eighty eight hundred dollars. She should win, um, but you know, Jessica, I could show up and, and and surprise us all. And the weird thing is, she could surprise us all, but we, we wouldn't be surprised, as you mentioned, because we don't really know what to get. Uh, out of Jessica I. So I think Jennifer should win this fight. I would stay away from it in DraftKings. And actually, I actually had my notes. Um, I was going to go with whoever Dan picks because he usually is pretty good at picking these these female fights um, pretty, pretty well. So I'm interested to hear what, what he thinks. If he's very strong on Maya, you know, you might consider the 8,800. And if he's very strong on, on Jessica, um, I think I would probably consider the $7,400 um, value there. So I'll wait to see what Dan says to really make up my mind. But I uh, I like Jennifer Maya right now. Yeah, so we both agree there. No Dan today, but he will be back tomorrow. He's traveling for work. His real-life job is insane right now. So he's traveling for work. He'll be here tomorrow for our betting breakdown. I am talking through some bets today, though. So uh, Monkey Knife Fight, I'm going less, less, and I'm pretty confident in that because um, I just think it's a, I think it's a grappling affair. And I do think it's three rounds, which has me worried. But the way Jennifer Maya is on top, she's looking for submissions. She's not just there for the control and then looking for ground and pound. So I think there'll be some exchanges, but really just to get it to the ground. Um, so I'm going less, less for my monkey knife fight play. Did you want me to go? Yeah, that paw when I pause after <laughs> well, finishing a point, just, that's when you make your point. Barrel into the next videos. I don't know what's going on. So Jeez. did you do less, less? Well, yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, I'll do less, less too. I just want to do whatever you do. Unbelievable. This is what I deal with. This is what I deal with. And no, the I, I, I honestly would play less, less. I was, that's why when I was going to say less, less, I was interested to see what you said. Yeah. Well, I had already I mean, Jesse, Jesse's in the chat. Less, less. There you go. Okay. Oh, wait, now Jesse's saying, Jacob, get on it. Jesse, get out of here. Next up at UFC 264, we have Ryan Hall versus Ilya Taporia. Ryan Hall is, is eight and one overall. He's four and one in his last five, but that dude fights like once every 11 years. He's got such random fights and layoffs. Like but nobody wants to fight him. It's so weird. It's so weird. Uh, and then uh, Tapora's undefeated. So obviously he's 10 and 0. Ryan Hall, if you're not familiar with Ryan Hall, Ryan Hall is like very unathletic, very unassuming, and just has slick as hell jujitsu, but not traditional jujitsu, not tournament jujitsu, just like catch you in some random crap in an MMA fight jujitsu. It's insane. It defies logic. He is a throwback to like, you know, early 2000s, late 90s, when you can get away with just being really good at one thing. Um, where Ilya Tapora is a very good wrestler. He's very strong. He also has very good jujitsu, but he has more traditional jujitsu, tournament jujitsu, not catch your ankle in some ridiculous scramble jujitsu. 
Um, if this fight stays striking, then he is by far the better striker, dominates Ryan Hall, not even close. If it goes to the ground, I think he wins there as well. I do not see Ryan Hall catching Ilya in or Ilya. I'm definitely saying it wrong, but I cannot see Ryan Hall catching Taporia in something, just some random Ryan Hall style submission. I just don't see it. Uh, I think the sport has sort of passed him by. I mean, it's a two year layoff. Every fight has a ton of random, you know, layoff time in between. I think the sport is sort of passing Ryan Hall by. I think Tapora's uh, legitimate wrestling background combined with his jujitsu, I think he can get it to the ground. His base is super solid. He's not going to get swept. I don't think he's, he's going to get caught in anything. I absolutely agree with the DraftKings price. I agree with the odds. And I the strike line's interesting because it's dead even. Um, I don't know if I'm doing less, less, or more, more. I'll let you jump in on that. But I have Ilya winning. I don't have him in my lineup because I have a couple of other expensive people. But I think he's a solid play for somebody's lineup. I just don't see Ryan Hall winning this fight. What are your thoughts? This is the easiest most confident lock of the week I've ever had in my life. Oh my the God. most confident lock of the week I've ever had in my life. Ryan Hall will find a way to submit this guy. He's gonna he's gonna do his arminari Ar roll or whatever it is, grab his leg, he'll hook him. The reason that he hasn't had any fights is literally nobody wants to fight him. If you fight him, you're probably gonna get your knee blown out, is what's gonna happen. And he couldn't be the you mentioned he couldn't be the nicest guy in the world. There's actually a video of him on YouTube of a guy giving him crap at like a pizza parlor. He just very calmly takes the guy to the ground while he's doing it, is telling the bystanders, I'm not gonna hurt him, I'm not gonna hurt him. Gets it like in full mount and then like chokes him out before the cops come. And just like the whole time, he's just so unassuming about the whole thing. I, I and you mentioned he he's like a he, obviously he his style is jujitsu, right? But he's incorporated kicking into his game and he's an incredible, his kicks are incredible because he says, listen, I'm going to just go throw a million kicks. If you catch one, it goes to the ground. That's fine. That's where I want to be anyway. So he does a very good job of incorporating kicks into his other strikes. He's actually, I think a very underrated striker as it is. He's won decisions where he hasn't gotten submissions because he's outstruck the people. Um, but I, I think he finds a way to, to get this on the ground. It finds a way to ground he, and he wins by submission. So this is honestly, even against an undefeated 10 0 fighter, the most confident lock of the week. I think honestly I've ever had the second that Ryan Hall was on this card. I, I was going to put him in my lineup and then he's the underdog. I'm like, Oh my God, the wizards an underdog. I'll take it all day. Give me lock of the week. Ryan Hall. I mean, I, I'm, I'm disappointed in your pick, man. I just do not see that happening. I'm very disappointed. I think the sport passed this dude by. He's he's essentially a one trick pony, and he's, he's fighting. Not, he's a good striker. He, he's got incredible kicks. Incredible kicks. Incredible. He's got very very good kicks. High kicks, low kicks, body kicks. Because that's all he throws. Because he's like catch my leg and take me down. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely always live for wild out of nowhere submissions. And I mentioned it's not really traditional jujitsu. It's like scramble jujitsu, which is more effective in MMA than you know point jujitsu. But and he's got. I, and I look at his Wikipedia. He's got all these open world gi, no gi jujitsu championships. So he's like, you talk about he's got like no tournament. No, but like in in MMA, he's not neon belly. Let me work to the side. Like he's just no, he, he literally does the arm arm and arm roll. <laughs> I can't yeah. even know the name, but he literally rolls into people's legs. But if I mean, if he grab, if he puts two fingers on the back of your foot, you're going to get heel hooked. I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, so just, what do you think about so fast? So obviously you're going to put a bet on him plus two Oh five. You're that confident. I'm sure the odds on a, on a submission are I'm, probably I'll pretty well. I'll tell you what I'm going to do for this Ryan Hall lock. It'll be very special. You see my dog in the background on the no sheet mattress. I'm going to pawn my dog, get some money for bet on Ryan Hall, quadruple the money, and then go get my dog back from the pawn shop. That's the Rocky. That's what Sylvester Stallone did for Rocky. He had to sell his dog to have the money to do Rocky. Yeah, he it. bought the dog back after Rocky was a hit. I've never seen it. Okay. Um, anyway, with, uh, I, I mean, if I you're the, it once. Th this is two big underdogs for you so far. So you should be going to wewantpicks.com slash bets, grabbing one of those options and hitting up these lines. So Every you line you're doing is getting some of Ryan Hall's DVDs to prepare for the grappling match versus Dan. <laughs> 
Uh, what are your thoughts on the monkey knife fight line? This is a really tough line. It's like right smack in the middle, and they're even. This is a tough I line. I know, but with Ryan Hall, his dominant striking, his dominant kicks, I think I would play more and more on this. Really? Don't you think there's a submission in there? I think it could take some time. <laughs> yeah, this is one where, I mean, more and more is probably the play. Um, but I might wait to see what happens later in the week because I told you these lines move. So if you love this line, hit it now at playmkf.com slash we want picks. Use promo code WWP. They will instantly match your deposit. Use the free money. Keep the real money and go from there. Next up at UFC 264, we have Trevin Giles Woo! versus Driscus Duplessis. I thought before we started I said, who's your lock of the week? You wouldn't tell me. I assumed it was Trevin Giles. He was your lock once. You got a gift from God with that insane decision that he got. But uh, I thought that's the direction you were going. Instead, you went with a far worse lock of the week pick. Either way, Trevin Giles, four and – or sorry, three and two in his last five, but coming off three wins in a row, Driscus Duplessis, four and one in his last five. Um we have striker versus grappler. This is a very traditional matchup. Um, Duplessis is a good striker. He definitely has a striking advantage. I see him keeping it on his feet and getting the win, potentially by stoppage. Trevin Giles is a grappler, but he does continue to move forward. And his last fight uh, was a gift from the heavens because he definitely did not win that fight. Either way, he is a grappler. Duplessis is a striker. Uh, and they have interesting styles because Trevin isn't a traditional grappler. And um, Duplessis' is striking is interesting. The way he moves, the way he comes in, the way he lands. I think he avoids the takedowns because he does move a lot. So I think he can avoid being pushed up against the cage. I think he can avoid the takedowns and just touch up Trevin, wear on him over time, and get a stoppage in the late second, early third round is how I see that going. So I really like... Um, Driscus in this fight. He's definitely my pick. Uh, I didn't put him in my DraftKings lineup, but if something changes, I might, because that's a pretty good price uh, for him. And obviously, Trevin's a, a pretty good grappler, and he's live to for his game plan. I just don't see him doing it. The odds are almost a pick him. DraftKings is almost a pick him, but I'm pretty confident Driscus will avoid the takedowns and just piece Trevin up on his feet. What are your thoughts? Yeah, you mentioned Trevin Giles, former lock of the week, dominated Roman Delize, um from, from bell to bell. I mean, it was just a um, – Roman was just a bloody mess after that fight, if I remember. I think he spent like three weeks in the hospital. It was it was bad news. I think Trevin actually almost caught a charge off of it for assault. It got so bad. Um, assault with two deadly weapons, if you know what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, Trevin Giles in this fight, I think <laughs> – I think he's got a. I think he's got to fight the same fight he fought against Ro, uh, against Roman because uh, Drikas is is one of those big guys with heavy hands that you know. And the reason I picked Trevin Giles as a lock of the week last time was because he's a very intelligent fighter and he doesn't panic. If he, if he gets in a bad situation, he doesn't panic, and and that's where I love his mindset. And honestly, if this was a little bit wider. You know, I have made lock of the weeks like this before, uh, 8,8200. I think if this was a little wider, I probably would have doubled down on Trevin to be lock of the week. Um, I think he I think he finds a way to win this fight like he found a way to win the last fight. Um, somehow, I, it, to be honest, it was a close fight. I thought he lost the last fight, but, you know, he found a way. And that's what intelligent fighters do. I, honestly, and we've talked about it before. If, sometimes if you win the last 30 seconds, that's all the judges remember. And he's a very intel intelligent guy that... If he knows if the round's close, if if I if I put the pressure on those last thirty seconds, I can steal these rounds from the judges. So I think he he needs to do that same thing again for this fight. I think he gets it done. So I, I like Trevin Giles in this fight. Not lock of the week, but he is a former winner. So you know, don't be surprised. I I almost I almost wish you did go with him for lock of the week because you've never had the same fighter twice. It'll happen. I mean, there's so many of them. Yeah, we'll see. We'll in see what three, year, three years, Ryan Hall's next fight, he'll be the lock of the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what's your play here on the uh, monkey knife fight line? I go I go uh, more and more. I agree with you. I think more and more is definitely the play here. And I like this line enough that uh, I'm going to do it on my other screen here while we're doing oh, this breakdown. Wow, screens. Wow. I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want that line to move. So you guys should definitely hit that up. I'm, I am confident in that. Even with a stoppage later in the fight, 
they'll get past that. I mean, there, there's some pretty busy guys here. Um, Driscus, every strike counts. So he's busy on his own. Then if he's defending takedowns, he'll be busy. Trevin Dials, Giles is going to be busy trying to get the takedown. So I imagine some decent volume out of both of them. Playmkf.com slash we own picks. Next up at UFC 264, we have the most exciting fight of the entire card. I'm telling you right now, let me interrupt you. This should have been the co-main event. I don't care. This should have been. The, I can't believe this isn't on the main card. This is on the prelims, right? I yeah, can't it's on the prelims. It. This is a fi fireworks. This is going to be an unbelievable fight. Unbelievable fight. So we have Nico Price versus Michelle Pajeda. Nico Price his, his last five is super spotty. Two wins, two losses, and he had that draw against Cowboy, which I'll talk about that in a minute. That draw is actually super disappointing because we've seen Cowboy since then, and he's dropped off significantly. And, and he was ecstatic that it was, that was yeah. the weirdest <laughs> yeah. reaction. It was a draw, and he was like, woo! And the Cowboy was looking at him like, what the hell are you so excited yeah. about? Michelle Pajeda, three and two in his last five. If you've never seen Michelle Pajeda fight, he is like backflips, spinning kicks, all sorts of crazy wild stuff. If you've never seen Nico Price fight, he just comes forward, throwing wild, willing to die, trying to kill you, smiling the entire time. His face could be hamburger, and he doesn't care. He is still coming forward. He is in like every highlight because he was on his back and knocked somebody out from his back with his hammer fist. I think one of the only people to ever do it. And then it happened again a few months after that. Um, incredible shoulders. I've never seen wider shoulders on a regular human being. I actually, interesting Nico Price story before I break him down. So I manage professional fighters I have for 15 years. For about two years, I lived in Cape Coral, Florida. That's where Nico Price is from. There's an American top team there. I have American top team roots. So I went there. I started training. Nico's training there. And they're like, oh, and this is before he was in the UFC. Oh, you manage fighters. You want to, can you help us get Nico a fight? I said, sure. I call up Bellator. I get him a Bellator offer. So he's, you know, been excited about it. I get him a Bellator offer. And then like a week later, I'm like, guys, I need an answer. Like what's going on here? And he was like, oh, I, I hurt my shoulder. I'm not gonna be able to fight. Didn't take that fight and then ended up in the UFC. So it all worked itself out. Otherwise he'd be in a multiple, a fight, bitter. multiple fight Bellator contract. I'm not bitter. I just, it's just funny how those yeah, things you sound go. a little bitter. Because at the time, I'm like, what a mistake. And then, you know, it's funny how those things work out. So Nico Price, one of the most exciting guys on the roster. He is an incredibly tough striker, but he does get hit, and he gets hit a lot. But it doesn't matter because he just keeps coming, and he'll also do the hitting. He never quits. He continues to move forward. And as we mentioned, that draw with Cowboy was interesting because – as Jacob said, he was very excited that he got the draw, like very excited. Uh, and we've seen what Cowboy has looked like since then, where Nico should have beaten him, should have beaten him straight up. Michelle Pajeda is super flashy, tons of spins and flips. He gets crazy with his striking, but he is a very good striker. He has questionable fight IQ at times, where he'll be doing the theatrics, get exhausted, and then sort of run out of gas and and uh, be in some trouble at the same time we've seen him composed do the right thing come forward stay in a traditional muay thai striking stance and look really really good so while i'm killing time here because jacob can't figure out how to how to freaking plug in a microphone um my pick is nico price i do have nico winning this fight i did put nico in my DraftKings lineup at 7300 bucks because I just think if Michelle gets crazy, and, and I think Nico is absolutely going to draw the crazy out of Michelle, right? I think he'll pull the crazy right out of him. So as Michelle gets crazy, starts doing things he shouldn't do, he is going to fade. Nico is not going to fade. He'll continue pressuring forward. He'll take advantage of the wild Michelle that will come out. And I have Nico winning this fight, uh, and he is in my DraftKings lineup. And I will put a money line bet on him. Uh, I'm big on Nico here. And Monkey Knife Fight, that is a very high line at 90 and a half. But I got to go more and more. I mean, these two are wild. They're absolutely wild. So that's my breakdown. Did you figure out how to use your microphone, Jacob? Is it working? 
What a disaster. Yeah, it's working. What's all your right. breakdown? Well, I don't know. It just I told you it falls out, and I think it's like all bent, so it's like it's hard to get back in. You know, Jesus, I mean? he moved apartments. You, you can't find the time to put anything on your walls. Your dog looks like he died on a bed with no sheets uh, in the background. She, you you can't get your microphone to work. You got boxes uh, everywhere. She, she her pronouns. Thank you. What a mess, man. Just just do your yeah, break. The only thing I have listed for my notes on this is cardio, and that's why I think Nico Price is going to win. I had him in my lineup originally, and then I had Ryan Hall was seventy one hundred dollars, so it didn't make sense to have a seventy one hundred dollar fighter and a seventy three hundred dollar fighter. The only thing that worries me is Michelle is very very good jujitsu pr practitioner that's the only thing that scares me this fight finds a way to the ground and he's very very fast with that stuff too um i can't remember the fight but he got somebody to the ground and almost choked him out and in, in i think the round ended but it, it happens so fast i think people forget because he uses all these wild theatrics that if you get on the ground michelle Pajeda, you're probably gonna get choked out so that's the only thing that would worry me about this um but yeah i think if it, this should go on unless somebody finds a wild knockout the longer this fight goes, it should be trending upwards towards uh, Nico. So he's just kind of kind of weather that storm um, and then find his way late. And I think he finds a way to, to win the fight. So I, I agree with you. I think it's a great value at, at $7,300. Yeah. And I think he'll draw the crazy out of Michelle Pajeda. I think he'll, cause he's crazy. So I think it'll just, Michelle won't be able to not do the spinning and the flips. And we've seen him get exhausted well, yeah, that, I mean, that, it's not like Michelle is a fighter that does wild stuff. That's like trying to contain it. He's trying to like, he, that's just what he does. So it's not like yeah. he's like not going to do that stuff. He's just going to come out and, but I agree. I no, think but in his last, in, in his last fight, he was much more composed, had a more traditional Muay Thai stance. So, I mean, if, if Michelle Pajeda gets rid of all that and comes out here, focused, composed, he's definitely, Michelle Pajeda is the better fighter. He's, oh yeah, like, Michelle Bejeda honestly is probably like a top five guy in the yeah. division if he like fought like normal because yeah. so, he is a very fluid striker and like and we mentioned his ground game is is and fantastic. Yeah, he's definitely the better fighter, but I think Nico's just willingness to die out there and his crazy is actual crazy. He'll pull out the theatrics and I think he'll get it done. And you brought up the cardio, which is a great point. Uh, I think money line bet on Nico Price might be the pick. Uh, plus 142, I would like a little more than that, so it might move. I'm not sure. Um, in the Monkey Knife Fight line, I mentioned more and more. Uh, so play mkf.com slash we want picks. You want to place a bet, we want picks.com slash bets. And if you like the shirt, the hat, the cup, we want picks.com. There's a button there that says shop. Everything you need right there. Next up at UFC 264, we have the will never go away Carlos Condit. Versus Max Griffin. Carlos Condit, two and three in his last five. Max, but two wins in a row on a nice little streak. Max Griffin, three and two in his last five, also riding a two-fight win streak. I mean, Carlos Condit has been around forever. Forever. He's one of those aging vets, but he's like the king of the aging vets. He has recent wins over... Um, Who's who's my boy that I just Matt picked? Brown. Matt Brown that I just picked last week to win. And, and, that, and that win need. and that win looks sorry to jump in here, but I just that win looks even better now because yes. before it was like Carlos Conner versus Matt Brown. It was like, yeah, two aging guys and they fought and they were, you know, it was a tough fight, but Carlos ended up winning. But then you saw Matt Brown come out and look fantastic. So that makes Carlos look even better than, than what we thought originally. I agree. And I and he beat Court McGee as well. I had I picked Court to win. Court won. I picked Matt to win. Matt won. I'm not picking Carlos Condit to win. And it pains me to do so. It really does. I love Carlos Condit. He has been around forever. I loved watching him in the WEC. If you've never seen Carlos Condit, he is good everywhere. He has very good striking, very good jujitsu. Decent takedowns. Like he is good everywhere. I mean, he's as well rounded as a fighter could possibly get. He's fought for the belt. He's fought the best on planet Earth in the UFC and the WEC before they bought it. Carlos Condit has been a phenomenal fighter since he was like 19 years old. And now he is 37. So he's been around a while. He's starting to slow down. He's starting to skip a beat. Max Griffin is very strong. And, and he's not much younger. So even though Carlos Condit has been around for 100 years, he's actually only like a year older than Max Griffin. He's just been fighting for much, much longer. He's a little worn out. But Max Griffin is very strong, and he's much 
fresher and faster. He doesn't have the years of abuse uh, on his body. Um, and he he can power his way through situations like Carlos Condit has a phenomenal clinch. Phenomenal clinch. Max Griffin is so powerful, such heavy-handed, he can work his way out of that. I think his speed here, which is the biggest gap, I think he's just so much faster than Carlos Condit. He does have good hands. He's got decent grappling. I think, although Carlos Condit is technically the better striker, technically the better grappler, technically has more experience, I just think Max Griffin's speed and power will get him out of the bad situations and keep him in the good ones where he can light up Carlos Condit, circle out, touch him, circle out. Carlos gets a clinch, literally bully his way out, touch him up, and keep moving. So I have Max Griffin winning this fight. Uh, I'll be rooting for Carlos Condit, kind of, because I also do have Max Griffin in my DraftKings lineup. That's how confident I am uh, in Max Griffin to win. But my heart will be Carlos Condit. My brain and wallet will be with Max Griffin. What are your thoughts? I'm going to ride the train, man, because Carlos looked great against Matt Brown. And I'll tell you what, he seems like a guy that when, when I think of, when I think of Carlos Condit, I think of, he seems like he's 41, 42 years old, been in all these wars, been knocked out a bunch of times. He's 37 and he's been TKO'd KO'd once. Yeah. And that was with leg kicks from Tyrone Woodley. So the guy's never even been knocked out. Obviously he's been in these wars. He's got the damage, but he's never really been knocked out. I honestly think, Carlos Condit at $7,500 is one of the best values on this card. He's not my lineup because I have the lock of the week. I do some other things, but I think that there might be, if I move some things around or fight drops, I'm looking at Carlos Condit because you mentioned he has weird takedowns. He was doing like these back trip takedowns to Matt Brown. He, he I think he in this fight, he's going to find probably an opportunity for two or three takedowns. That's an easy 15 points. He's going to be there for all the striking. He doesn't get tired. He comes with the volume. He brawls if you need the brawl. He gets dirty. I think $7,500 is, is incredible value for Carlos Condit. And I think he ends up being one of these guys. We saw it with uh, with Glover, right? Where it's like you don't know what you're getting with Glover, and all of a sudden he he, he rattles off four or five in a row, and then you're thinking, is this guy going to get a title shot? And he, and he earns a title shot. I'm not saying Carlos is going to go all that way to get a title shot, but I think at 37 years old, the way he's looked in these last two fights – he could rattle off three, four more, and all of a sudden you're talking about is Carlos Con a top? He's in the top ten now. He's now he's fighting top five guys. I don't think he gets all the way to a title shot. I'm not saying that, but I think we've seen lately these older guys make these runs, and I think he's going to be one of them that rattles off another three or four in a row. And I think it, it, Max Griffin, he, he gets it done against Max Griffin. You know, and this is more about just riding and training the momentum with Carlos more than it is uh, anything against Max Griffin because Max Griffin's a, a, an incredible fighter. Yeah, I mean, you and I are on opposite sides of this, but I, I don't disagree with anything you said. This is a tougher pick, but I just had to put my my bias aside, put my fandom aside, and just look at it objectively. And objectively, Carlos Condit is slowing down. He never had power. He was just always very technical, very well-rounded. He's slowing down. Max Griffin with actual power. Max Griffin with legitimate speed. Um, so Max Griffin's my pick, and he is in my DraftKings lineup. Um, but... You know, we're still a week and a half out. So depending on what happens, uh, that may move. The monkey knife fight line, I'm confident in the more and more. I don't see a stoppage here. I just don't. I think, uh, you know, as we mentioned, Carlos Condit is as tough as they come. Max Griffin is also not uh, not a bum. If Max Griffin gets put out of there, it's because he gets submitted um, with some crazy Carlos Condit Long was, leg triangle, most likely. I was, I was going to say the exact same thing. The only way I see this being a finish is if if it goes to the ground and Carlos does some weird something to get his back or some weird bulldog choke, something just random. He's like got going. crazy long legs. He'll throw up a triangle. But that also works against Carlos, man. There's times where he's perfectly fine chilling on his back, perfectly fine on his back, throwing up crazy stuff. And that's where Max Griffin will just posture up and land and, and – uh you know, ride those points out. I'm so I actually will say Carlos by armbar. Well, then go to wewantpicks.com slash bets, grab that prop bet, and make yourself a ton of money. And anybody who does go to wewantpicks.com slash bets and signs up, let us know. Reach out. We will send you $20 as a thank you. Obviously, we have a partnership here. We want to encourage as many people as possible to sign up, and we're willing to pay you to do so. So wewantpicks.com slash bets. Check it out. You want to play the monkey knife fight line? I'm going more and more. You are as well. Uh, play mkf.com slash we want picks. 
Next up at UFC 264, we have Sugar Sean O'Malley. Uh, wait, versus- you didn't undefeated. I, I was Sugar just Sean about O'Malley. to say I did the graphics this week, and I almost made it 13 and up just to just because Sean O'Malley is somehow pretending that he didn't lose. I think he. I think. I think we all know where he got that from. I think we all know where he got that from. All of a sudden, the lock of the week never loses, and then now he's making T-shirts about being 13-0 and 0 and all this stuff. Well, either way, we have Sean O'Malley versus the very late replacement. And I guess not really because there's still a week and a half, but they just announced it yesterday. Chris Motinho, Sean O'Malley, 13-1. and 1. That one loss is that freak loss where Cheeto Vera lit up his leg. Sean O'Malley quit. You could say I'm being harsh for saying he quit, but he said his leg stopped working, so he quit. Um, so he is a one in his last five. Chris Motinho, three and two in his last five, nine and four overall. This is uh, a weird matchup, a very weird matchup. Sean O'Malley coming off of an awesome win over Thomas Almeida. I picked Sean to lose that fight because Thomas looks so good. That fight, I mean, Sean O'Malley looked amazing. Like, let's get him – Top five in the division type amazing. And his original opponent, I actually thought was beneath him. This is now insane what we've got going on here. So very quickly, let me break these guys down. Sean O'Malley, he doesn't look like it, but he's got legitimate power and accuracy. He actually is shockingly an athlete in that body. And he's putting people away. He's doing whatever he wants to do. If he does have a weakness, it's potentially the grappling, but we really haven't seen that fully exposed just yet. So Sean O'Malley, unfortunately, I find myself rooting against him, unfortunately, is good everywhere. Uh, Chris Motinho, uh, I have some connections who know him. I'm from Connecticut. I know um, everybody on the Connecticut MMA scene. He's from Massachusetts. I reached out, got some feedback. He's a super tough dude who is a good wrestler, but good wrestler for the state, meaning like top three in high school in Massachusetts. All right. So not college wrestler, but, but good wrestler. Nonetheless, he comes forward is willing to bang, but he does get hit. He will take one to give one. And I do not think Sean O'Malley is the right person to play that game with. So I I mean, it pains me. But I'm all in on Sean O'Malley. Uh, DraftKings, everything. I have Sean O'Malley, everything in this fight. I just do not see him losing. Uh, you know, I think it's absurd that this is the matchup. He should probably be fighting people top five on the planet. But this is the matchup. I do wish, you know my whole spiel, when uh, DraftKings assigns a price to a fighter and then they get a new opponent, the the price that was assigned doesn't change. I wish he was cheaper. I wish he had a much tougher opponent to begin with so I could get him at 80-something hundred, but he was already the most expensive on the card. Now he's just even more worth it. So he's in my lineup, no questions about it. He's my pick, no questions about it. I imagine most people, if they're watching this, it's just because they want to know about Chris, so I just broke that down. But what are your thoughts, Jacob? Yeah, this is probably going to be one of those ones where even if Sean O'Malley loses, it doesn't hurt anyone because everyone is going to have Sean O'Malley in their lineup. Uh, even at $9,500, $9, I think that's still even a deal. I don't know what the most expensive fighter ever, but if they redid these odds, he would probably be ninety seven dollars or $9,800. Um, so I think you're even getting a deal at $9,500. And I honestly thought when his fight dropped, it sounded like he was going to get like a real opponent. And I was kind of excited. I'm a big Sean O'Malley fan. I was a little bit nervous that he was going to, step up a little too fast on short notice because he's he's one of those guys that says, you know, I'll fight anyone. And it sounded like, obviously, there's weird stuff that happens. You don't know what the truth is. But it sounded like a lot of people called him out, said, I'm ready to fight, got the contract this week, and then, you know, all of a sudden changed their mind. He mentioned someone called him out, and then they got the contract and said, oh, I don't think I could make the wait in time. So he was making fun of them. Like, you're calling me out. Here's the contract. Now you don't want to fight. So I think there was a little bit of that going on. I think a lot of people say they want to fight Sean until it's time to fight Sean, and then they really don't want to fight Sean because he is very, very talented. So I think Sean should dominate this fight. I was going to pick him in my lineup uh, no matter who he fought, honestly, because I think he's that talented. Um, so I like Sean to win this fight. Uh, $9,500 I think is still still a deal. So I'm one-on-one picking with Sean. I picked against him with Cheeto Vera, and I picked against him with Thomas Almeida. So I hit the Cheeto, lost the Almeida. 
Now I'm back on the Sean O'Malley train. I mean, that, I just, whole, that whole that whole he quit stuff is nonsense too because he hurt his leg, couldn't feel his leg, and kept fighting for like a few minutes, like throwing kicks and, and then quit, and was still piecing up Cheeto, and then finally just couldn't put any weight on it. And even on his his back, he was he was fighting a little bit, and then he just got hit with an elbow and was like, "Ouch!" So, so it's too early. There's no DraftKings price associated with Chris Monkey Knife Fight. Didn't put out a line yet, but. Uh, whatever they put out, just go less, less, <laughs> whatever that line is, go less, less, because I think it's a stoppage. I think it's early. Uh, congrats to Chris for getting this opportunity, taking this fight, stepping up. On, I mean, on the biggest card of the year. Yeah. This is a hell yeah. of an opportunity. hundred percent. Even, even if he lasts a round, if he gets a takedown or something weird, I mean, all of a sudden everyone's like, Oh, well, and Chris is the type of guy he will go out there and he will fight hundred percent. He will go out there and throw which, and, as you mentioned, could be his de his detriment in this fight because Sean is so precise, man. So precise. A hundred percent. He he already is pretty hittable. And the, then the only thing that, that could happen, I don't mean to keep interrupting you, but I keep thinking of this in the back of my head, that Sean already is a show-off, confident guy. So he gets a short-notice opponent. He could come in. He loves those spinning heel kicks, all that wild stuff. If Chris just times something just right, you might see something wild happen here because Sean – Already overconfident as it is fighting even good competition. Not saying that Chris isn't, but he Sean's going to come in and act in hot, like, like hot shit. So we'll see what happens. Well, and let's put it this way: the last couple of weeks, I've struck gold with these last-minute UFC guys. Right, struck gold. Um, I had Kennedy. Who was it last week? I, I, I've absolutely struck gold with these short-notice, last-minute guys, and. Not happening this time. <laughs> Not happening. When I saw Chris Motino was the opponent, I, I didn't know anything about him. I had to do my research, but my research was calling people who train with him and know him. Um, and they all, you know, I'm not going to name names or anything, but they're all like, listen, tough, nice, cool dude, but he does get hit. He goes marching forward. Sean O'Malley's not the right person to do that with. I think it's pretty clear who the pick is here. We all have him in our drafting lineup. You brought up a good point that everybody will have him in their drafting lineup. So, you know, we'll talk about that in the DraftKings breakdown video if that if you should or should not. But either way, that's our pick. Next up at UFC 264, we have Irene Aldana versus Yana Kunitskaya. Irene Aldana is three and two in her last five. Kunitskaya four and one in her last five. And Irene, that, out, and that, that's not a typo there. The 152 and a half. Uh, no, no, that's the strike line. That is not a typo. Two predominant strikers, so they're both strikers. So they're both looking to strike. They're both going to strike. Uh, Irina Dalna is a very technical boxer with very good defense and legitimate power. She has put people out, straight up out cold, and you don't see that very often in some of these, you know, women's weight classes. So I, I, Irene Aldana, no questions about it, a legitimate boxer. Genuinely very good at boxing. Yana Kuninskaya doesn't have the same power, but she has a ton of output, and she has the diversity. I don't know if Irene Aldana has ever thrown a kick. Yana Kuninskaya will throw kicks. A very diverse striker, uses all of her limbs a very good striker who is busy and comes forward and the strike line shows how busy she, she is there. Um, she also has wrestling, which uh, Aldana doesn't have. So honestly, this is a very, very good boxer with a ton of power versus a more well-rounded mixed martial artist. I have Kuniskaya win in this fight. I have a money line bet on Kuniskaya. I'm very confident in her winning this fight, but, Irene is very dangerous with that technical boxing and that incredible power. But I talk about it all the time. At the end of the day, if if we had a list of ways to win fights, Irene Aldana has one way. Yana Kuniskaya has four ways, right? Oh, she can get takedowns. She can kick. She can punch. You know, she's got the better cardio, more well-rounded. So I'm going with Kuniskaya. She's my pick. I'm pretty confident in it. I put a money line bet on her. I don't have her in my DraftKings, but you know, I, I just I stay away from some of these fights in DraftKings, honestly. But um, I, I'm pretty confident in that underdog there. What are your thoughts, Jacob? Yeah, I was going to go with Yana until you went with Yana. I'm going with Aldana, and I'm telling you why because Caitlin Vieira is 11 and two. Her two losses are to Irene Aldana and to Yana Kunik. 
Kutskaya. <laughs> Kutskaya. So she's lost to both of these females. The difference was Aldana KO'd her. Yana lost a, or won a decision. You're doing MMA Aldana. math, man. Everybody, there this is the problem I mean, with no Dan very, and no Nick look, here today. You look for patterns. You look for oh color coding God. note cards. You look at Instagrams. I'm going Aldana. MMA math is absolute trash. I've managed fighters for 15 years. It doesn't work. I appreciate you doing your research like that, but MMA math does not work. My pick is Kuniskaya. Jacob's random throw something at the wall, see what happens. Pick is Aldana. Kuniskaya is probably a decent DraftKings play. I'm not doing it. I do have a money line bet on her. Check out our betting breakdown. Go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. Monkey knife fight, less, less. I know they're very busy. These are two busy women, but I, I'm just going with less, less here. That Those numbers are so high. They could absolutely get past around. It. 50 strikes around is Yana's number. I mean, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, it's more than 50 around for her. No, no, you're right. It's 50 around. Duh. A doy. Um, either way, no, it's more. 150, two and a half. Well, I mean, a little bit more. but Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, I just did the math wrong in my head. Either way, um, I agree. I'm going less, less. And they're very busy, and and these lines are made up. You know, they literally look at fights, the totals, the round expectations, and they put a lot of thought and effort into these monkey knife fight lines. I'm still going less, less. Uh, I'm going to put some money on that for sure. Um, and that's playmkf.com slash we want picks. Next up at UFC 264, we have a big battle of the boys: Tai Tuivasa versus Greg Hardy. Two strikers. Greg Hardy is interesting because he came out guns blazing, looked amazing for a while, then started to mix in some wins and losses. He is 2-2-1 two, two, and one in his last five. Tai Tuivasa, 2-3 two and three in his last five, riding a two-fight win streak. Honestly, I'm surprised that these odds are what they are. I'm surprised um, that it's that close. I mean, Tai Tuivasa is a genuine striker, a very technical striker with heavy hands, a Samoan chin, which means he's going absolutely nowhere. He has decent kicks, and, and he can wrestle if he needs to wrestle. He's a genuine MMA fighter. He's a tried-and-true heavyweight who has fought legit people, and he's got power for days and a chin like nobody's ever seen. Greg Hardy, former NFL player, freak athlete, he also has a ton of power. He's improving very quickly because he is such a freak athlete. Um, he has uh, no ground game whatsoever, <laughs> none, not even a little bit. And we saw that in his last fight. It was it, he was absolutely clueless on the ground. Um, I don't know if that'll be a factor in this fight. I know Tai Tuivasa has trained camp, trained changed camps. He's at an AKA now. I'm sure he's training his wrestling. He's an MMA fighter and has been for a long time. I just don't know if that's the game plan, and I don't know if he needs it, to be honestly. So it is a tool if he wants to go to it, but uh, Tai Tuivasa beats the piss out of Greg Hardy. I have a money line bet on him. I have him in my DraftKings lineup, and I just think he absolutely dominates Greg Hardy. They are not even – like. It's a, it's a mismatch, a complete mismatch. Like how how do you even see Greg Hardy winning this fight? Knocking out Tai Tuivasa, who has a head like a cinder block. He's not more technical, so he'll just have to land something lucky. He's not going to use any wrestling because he doesn't have it. And even if he shoots, Tai Tuivasa's great takedown defense. Jacob's making stupid faces. Do not tell me you're picking Greg Hardy. I'll kick you off and I'll finish this by myself. Greg Hardy is in my lineup. Oh my god! And I'm taking Greg Hardy because I I think both these I think this is a first round finish either way. Dude, you are. At, can we bet before we do this? Can we bet this week? Honestly, I the way I see this is I think it's a first round finish either way. So I'll take the seventy eight hundred dollar value and just kind of coin flip it because you know both these guys ties uh, most of his wins are first round finishes. Greg's got a lot of them too. I think that just Greg just blitzes them and just like you said, I think he gets lucky and just throws some wild stuff because a lot of times these technical guys are used to fighting technical fights and Greg Hardy throws wild stuff from wild angles. And with his power, we've seen him land before this, just bull rush people and just start throwing against the cage. And, you know, I think if he does that, he can find a way to get a first round finish. And at $7,800, he's the better value if you're looking at, at, at money here. So I was going to pick somebody in this fight because I feel like it's going to be first round knockout. 
And it was one of those where I was just going to go with the underdog. So I picked Greg Hardy at $7,800 to work in my lineup for a first round finish. That's insane. That's insane. I, I mean, and if you look at who Greg Hardy lost, we lost to Volkov and uh, Tabora. You know, Volkov is fighting incredible, and, and Tabora has won five in a row now and just beating everyone. Okay, and, and look who he's fought. He fought a bunch of nobodies, and then when he fought anybody, he lost. Now he's fighting an anybody, and he's going to get smoked. Either way, let's bet. We're he gonna beat better. Jordan DeCastro, Maurice Green. Those are very, very good heavyweights. Yeah, now they've been doing really well lately, both of them. So uh, you and I are going to place a couple bets against each I mean, other because Carlos Felipe. Or, I mean, uh, uh, nah, Jorgen huh. De Castro was undefeated when he fought Greg Hardy. Okay. Either way, well, we're and Greg split Hardy on, won a decision. We're split on this one as well. So I I agree. There's a stoppage. I just think it's the other way. I think less less on the strike lines of play, and I'm sure you agree with that. You you know because you you think Greg Hardy's going to win by stoppage, but. I've got it the other way. And this is the last time I'm back on Greg Hardy because I, I did get, I picked him against Tabora and he kind of screwed me. So this, this, this is the last <laughs> chance, Greg. That was not good because he was clueless on his back. He was just like, oh, God. Well, and, and not that it, it will need to get there, but if he, let's say he clips Taya and Taya's a little on ice skates, he can wrestle and grapple and he can get it down when he wants and win there. Either way, I just Ty, think it's not Taya, it's Ty. Ty to Ivasa. Taya. Tui Vasa is my pick. Jacob's going Greg Hardy. We're both going less, less on the monkey knife fight line. Go to playmkf.com slash we want picks. Use promo code WWP. They will instantly match your deposit. So you don't have to use any of your real money. Just use the match deposit money. I have a money line bet on Tui Vasa. We want picks.com slash bets. You're going to get the best possible match there. After you sign up, let us know. We will send you 20 bucks on Venmo, Cash App, however you want it. Next up at UFC 264, we have the co-main event of the evening. We have Gilbert Burns versus Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Gilbert Burns, 4-1 in his last five. Stephen Thompson, 3-2 and two in his last five. Burns coming off of that, that loss to um, Kamaru Usman, where he actually dropped Usman and rocked Usman and looked like he was about to be the welterweight champion of the world. And then, you know... Usman turned it on and, and got his own knockout there. You really can't fault Gilbert Burns. There's nothing you can take away from him there. Obviously, he was, if he was in a little better shape, maybe he could have worked through that. But uh, I don't see that as a uh, – that's not a knock on him. If anything, he's the closest to putting Usman away that anybody's ever been. Steven Thompson, great striking, and he has that in-and-out karate style, and he has looked spectacular lately. He has looked absolutely – phenomenal lately his win over jeff neal was insane it was a clinic an absolute clinic on jeff neal and he's aging but he's aging like fine wine i mean he literally is looking better and better every single fight you know in his and his little streak here obviously he had uh that loss to anthony pettis was crazy um legitimate crazy um but the uh, the go ahead and say it. You don't want to say it, but he lost the greatest fighter on planet Earth. Who's Darren that? Hill. Darren Your buddy Hill. Darren Till. That was one seventy Darren Till too. Now we got one eighty five Darren Till, who's about to just destroy mankind. So Wonder Boy um, again has an in and out karate style, predominantly a striker, but he does have grappling. He's a very well rounded mixed martial artist. Um, and I think that karate style is going to be a problem for Gilbert Burns. But Gilbert Burns, he's coming off the Usman loss. I don't know if that's messing with his head or not, but let's assume it is not. Uh, Gilbert Burns has power in his hands. Gilbert Burns has insane jujitsu, insane jujitsu, and he's a good striker. So he's definitely a threat for a knockout. He's definitely a threat for a submission. But keep in mind, Gilbert Burns was a 155 pounder that's now been up at 170 for a little while. Steven Thompson is a very, very big 170 pounder, and he has that in and out karate style. He ga gauges distance really, really well. His counter striking is phenomenal. I think Gilbert's going to have a hard time getting to Steven, and I think Wonder Boy is just going to light up Gilbert. Uh, I have Wonder Boy in my lineup. Um, I, I'm picking Wonder Boy to win. I just think the way he's been looking lately, uh, and and I think, yeah, I think Wonder Boy is a solid pick here. I, I really. 
other than Gilbert Burns catching him with, with one of those big power punches, I just don't see Steven Thompson losing. He's not going to submit Wonder Boy, even though he's very good at jiu-jitsu. I don't see him submitting Wonder Boy. I have him in my lineup. Wonder Boy's my pick. Uh, I haven't placed a bet yet because the props weren't out this morning. Uh, but I'm going to do um, probably uh, Wonder Boy by stoppage, but decision, no action. So if Wonder Boy wins by stoppage, which he may, I'll hit that bet. If it goes to a decision, which is most likely, I get my money back. So I'll just be chasing some stuff there. And you're only going to get bets like that at weonpicks.com slash bets. Jacob, you made faces again. Are you going Gilbert Burns here? No, I don't think. I think there's different levels. Even at this, at, even the, I think they're both top five guys, right? I still think that there's different levels. Steven Thompson has been in the top five. He's fought the top guys. He still looks like the top guy. Where Gilbert Burns had a nice little run. He, he was almost the champ. You mentioned he dropped to Usman and was literally almost the champ. Probably should have been the champ. Um, but I just think there's still different levels. I think Burns had a nice run, but I don't think he's a top level welterweight. I think we're going to see in the next five or six fights that he's going to go, you know, two and three or three and two and, and look good at times and maybe submit a guy. But, you know, Stephen Thompson is real, real talent. And I just don't see Gilbert being able to even get this fight to the ground. I don't think he can even get close to Stephen Thompson. You saw once Usman started using his jab, how effective that was against Burns. And that's just an Usman jab. And Usman's got a great jab. But with Stephen Thompson's length in and out, he's going to give Gilbert Burns all sorts of issues with his length. Um, so I love Steven Thompson in this fight. He's in my lineup. Um, I would take, you know, the, the 163 and I would take, uh, probably the more, more here. Cause I don't, you know, I don't think Steven Thompson's going to KO him or anything like that. So I think Steven can definitely get over the 95 and, and Gilbert playing that game. Uh, he can strike. So I, I could see him get over the 67 and a half. Yeah. I, and I, I'm not, I don't, uh, I told you as soon as those lines bet, I'm going to do, uh, my bet's going to be Steven Thompson by stoppage decision, no action. I don't think there's a stoppage, but I'll get some solid odds on that. And if it goes to decision, I just get a refund. I get my money back. It's like nothing ever happened. So I have no problem placing that bet. Um, but I agree with you. I think it goes a distance. 95 and a half is a lot because he is an in and out guy. He's not a super high volume guy. He's in and out. He's always but bouncing but when, around. But when he throws, it's like it's it's like kick, punch, punch, or it's punch, yeah. punch, kick, or it's 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 not just one, one. It's always pop, 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 pop. It's always very fast stuff. So. It adds up quick when you do stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, th that's the only thing that makes me nervous. And more and more is probably the safe play or more on Burns, less on Thompson. This is going to go three rounds probably. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. This is a really interesting fight. I'm, I'm just, This is like if Gilbert Burns loses this fight, I guarantee he's going to say he's going back down to 155. If Wonder Boy loses this fight, I don't think nothing happens, right? He'll fight again. He, he was on the Rogan podcast. Just talk about, he's like, I'm going to fight as long as I love it. Like, I'm not going to stick around till I'm going to get brain damage, but I like it. I enjoy it. I'm just going to keep the fighting. This fight when, he, when he knocks people down, when he gets knocked down, it's so funny because he lets the person get back up and then he, he like gives them a little glove tap. Like, hey, my bad, man. Like he literally will drop somebody. <laughs> he's just such a nice dude. He's just like, hey, my bad. Hey, good job. Or he gets hit. He's like, hey, man, that was good. That was a nice shot there. Huh? Well, and so he's, he's Chris Weidman's brother-in-law. So they're always a ton of fun. Uh, watching them hang out together. So either way, we're both going Stephen Thompson. We both have in our DraftKings lineup. We're probably going the more and more monkey knife fight, and uh, we're going to sprinkle in some prop bets on Stephen Thompson as well. Next up at UFC 264, we have the main event of the evening. We have Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor, the third, the trilogy. They are one and one. Dustin Poirier is four and one in his last five. Conor McGregor, Three and two in his last five. Both of them losing to Khabib and Connor also lost to Dustin in the last outing. The last time we broke this fight down was, I think, the very first breakdown we ever did. And it was the breakdown was spectacular. Our picks were on point. We we freaking nailed Dustin Poirier to win that fight, but there was no graphics. It was ugly. Either way, Dustin Poirier, incredibly well-rounded, incredibly tough. And and Skill for skill, Dustin Poirier is the better fighter, right? He's not as sharp and doesn't have the same power that Connor does in striking, but he's definitely the better wrestler, definitely the better grappler, and I would argue he's tougher. He's more well-rounded. He's tougher. The, the Connor McGregor-Nate Diaz two fight, Connor's super tough as well. But 
Conor McGregor has that laser accuracy and a ton of power in everything. And if we look at the last fight, Dustin Poirier won that fight, obviously, and he won it with those low leg kicks. But if you watch that fight, I remember I picked Dustin to win. Uh, Dan picked Dustin to win. I think you picked Connor, but you're just a giant Connor fan. Um, and and watching that first round, I remember being like, damn it, dude, damn it. Connor's lighting Dustin up. I'm going to lose it. He's going to put Dustin away. And then Dustin turned around and won that fight. So with that being said, that was Connor after a long layoff. That was Connor, nice guy Connor, you know, almost didn't know who he wanted to be anymore, Connor. I, I think Connor wins the I think he wins this fight. I'm I'm flipping my pick from the last go around. And if you re-watch that fight, everything Connor threw landed and it landed well with some legitimate power. Dustin was in trouble more than one time. And I felt like Connor could have stopped him if he really poured it on. So obviously. His legs got lit up last fight. He gassed and he got stopped. But I think he has a plan for the leg kicks. I have to imagine he has a plan for the leg kicks this fight. He's still going to have that accuracy. He's still going to have that power. Uh, and I think he gets it done this time. I genuinely think Conor McGregor gets it done. This is a pick him across the board. I don't have either one of my DraftKings lineup because nothing would surprise me. But I do think Conor wins. What are your thoughts, Jake? Yeah, I went all the way back to one side and then all the way back to the other because it leading up to this, and it was more of me just like trying to like jinx the fight because I was picking Dustin for the last like three months. I, I know in our group chats and everything, I was saying, you know, Dustin's going to win. Dustin's going to win. Dustin's going to win. And then leading up to this week, you start watching the promos and Connor sucks me back in again. I rewatched that first fight. You mentioned it. Connor was landing anything and everything that he won in that first round. The issue was, and I think you kind of alluded to it, was he didn't really capitalize on it. He would land it, but I think he was trying to pace himself because we've seen Connor have issues with cardio in the past in these five-round fights. I think he was trying to pace himself in that fight a little too much. It was the first big fight back against a real competition. I think he was just trying to pace himself too much, so he didn't jump all over uh, Dustin when he could have. This fight, there's two factors involved. Obviously, the, the calf kicks was a big issue. I think he comes out and blitzes Dustin because he knew he landed everything he wanted to in the first round of that first fight. If you blitz him early and finish early, you don't have to worry about the calf kicks. And then there's this thing leaking online about a picture he posted that he might have staph infection. I said it in the group chat. He has a picture of him flexing on his Instagram. He's got a big thing on his elbow. A lot of people are saying staph. People are saying maybe it's a late-stage staph infection. But if you, if you combine everything, if he had staff, if he has staff and he's had issues with training, I've never had staff. You can maybe talk more about uh, people I've had staff before about how it affects your training. You can get really sick from staff from what I understand. If he's had issues and he knows the cardio is not there, I could see Connor coming out even more in blitzing in that first round. And if he does that and really sits on punches, the way he was landing in the first fight, I don't know if that changes. You know, I think I think I think that those exchanges happen the way they happen. Connor's that good of striker that if he comes out even more aggressive and just says, screw it, I'm going first round, get this first round knockout, make a show out of it, and I'm gonna put this guy on the first round. I think he does it. And I think Connor wins this fight. Um so I've gone all the way back, and I think Connor does it. I think he does it in the first round. Obviously, it's kind of what everyone's saying, right? That it's either the first round. If it doesn't, that Dustin's probably going to win. That honestly is probably how it's going to play out. You know, I think Connor was able to out tough Nate Diaz in that five round fight because honestly, I don't think Nate Diaz is really that good. He's very tough, but he's really not that good. Dustin will not um, be able to, or Connor can't outpoint Dustin for five rounds. So I think he comes out and just says, screw it. I'm going first round or bust but I think he gets it done the way he was landing strikes in the first fight. So I have Connor in this, I have Connor in this fight and he's in my DraftKings lineup. Yeah, I didn't do, I didn't touch him for my lineup, but, but, and, and they're both affordable. I just, does, does the staff concern you? If that is staff, if he hasn't, I mean, it was on his arm and it didn't seem massive. I mean, um, it like, I mean, it was like a half dollar size on his elbow. So. Yeah. Google Kevin Randleman and staff. And then well, yeah, was, no, I know. Was, there's yeah. Staff, but, to me, it looks, I mean, it looks pretty bad. And people are saying maybe it's just, you know, ru just a rug burn from rubbing elbows, grappling or whatever. So it just could be anything. I mean, a, a real staph infection can be an actual problem. You end up in the hospital on IV antibiotics uh, by the bag. 
Um, and I, and, I, and I, re- I did reach out. I sent it to you guys, but I'm letting the, the chat know as well. I reached out to Connor. I'm waiting to hear back. I think with the time difference, he's probably waking up pretty soon. He'll see my tweet and respond, and then I'll let you guys know what he says. Yeah, we'll, we'll be holding our breath. Either way, let us know your picks here. I'm very curious. I imagine most people are split down the middle. It is a trilogy. We have a stoppage on each side. Obviously, the most recent one is Dustin stopping Connor. The reality is, as we both said, go back, watch that fight. Connor touched I'm up. I'm putting Dustin. five dollars on Connor by submission. He touched up Dustin however he wanted to. With that being said, Dustin is tough as hell. He will never quit. He's tough as hell. He'll continue coming forward and he can take a beating. So if he can survive the early onslaught of Connor, then we'll see more of the same from last time. But I do think Connor will be more prepared, especially for the leg kicks. And I think he will get it done this time. But I didn't put in my DraftKings. I did put a bet. I grabbed Connor by KO TKO. I got some solid plus odds on that. And I'll take that. You know, I'll take that in a fight like this. Um, you could just go money line on either guy because it's almost even money. But, you know, I, I'd rather chase some plus because I'm really not positive um, exactly what's going to happen. But I do like the less, less on monkey knife fight. I think it's an early fight and I don't think it's a wild barrage. I think Connor's going to come out, touch him up. You know, uh, Dustin will fire back. I mean, 85 strikes, 70 strikes. That's third round, right? That's that's a couple of rounds. I don't think it's going that far. I think we're looking at two rounds, maybe middle of the third, and that's the end of it. So I, uh, I'm i going less, less here. I, As a fan, a five-round war would be awesome. I just don't see that happening. So I'm going less, less. What are your thoughts? Yeah, hey, I'll go less, less. Yeah. So I agree with that. Either way, guys, that's our full card breakdown. Thank you for watching. Go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. After you sign up, let us know, and we will Venmo you or Cash App you $20 as a thank you, and then go on and place your bets. For Monkey Knife Fight, go to playmkf.com slash we want picks. Use promo code WWP, and they will instantly match your deposit. I say this all the time. Deposit 20 bucks if you're if you're nervous. Take the free 20. Only play with the free 20. Leave the real money there and withdraw it if you want. And then, of course, go to wewantpicks.com. We have a store, all sorts of fancy stuff. Thank you very much for the watch. And let us know in the comments your picks, your plays. Thank you very much. Everybody in the chat, sorry we didn't really interact. Uh, When we do these live, we got to do it as if we're doing it normal because we chop them up and upload them again. So we'll touch on a few few comments here real quick. Um, There was one comment about you not being able to pronounce Ty's name. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find that one right now. I think that was David Ramon. Yeah, David Ramon. How does Angelo mispronounce a three-letter name? All right, buddy. I'm gonna send you a couple three-letter names, and we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what you do with them. Um, Gibster, you want to see a Wonder Boy title shot? I completely agree. I would love to see a Wonder Boy title shot. Uh, and David, again, we're gonna do our drafting video right after this. We're not gonna do it live though, so we're gonna drop in a minute. We'll talk about doubling up the main. I don't think this is a main double up because I think there's a stoppage. So doubling up the main, if you think it's a war or five rounds, that's yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, double, I wouldn't up. double this up. No, I would not. Now, if if Nico Price versus Michelle Pajeda was a five round fight, that's a double upper. Um, submission, Jesse, that'd be wild. I know you said you you threw a couple bucks on that. That would be wild. And uh, thanks, guys, for the watch. Honestly, we genuinely appreciate it. And um, we Ryan got this out to you Hall. early. Okay. Ryan Hall. I'm filming the betting breakdown tomorrow morning with Dan once he's back from his trip. So we'll have that uploaded. Let's check this, my Monkey Knife Fight NBA plays here. This is up now, obviously. And I'm going to drop so that Jake and I can film our DraftKings breakdown and get that up for you. Thank you all. Woo! Is the game over? Oh, we're still live, right? I hit one. We're talking about monkey knife fight. This isn't just monkey knife fights, not just MMA guys. If you guys are NBA fans, NFL fans, I hit one uh, more or less, two or two. I hit two of them. I'm looking for the big ones now. Hold on. Let's let's stay alive here. I might have hit. I, mean, one I just got to sit here like an idiot while you do this. I'm brutal. Oh, wait. Some of these are showing completed. They're switching these around on me. 
Okay. I mean, these, I mean, some of these stuff are like literally, these are like disappearing. Okay. We're going so that we can do our DraftKings breakdown and our Monkey Knife Fight breakdown. Thank you all very much for the watch. Let us know in the comments what you think about Jacob's Lock of the Week. I completely disagree with it. But we will see you next Saturday. But maybe we'll hop on for a live before then. See you then, guys.